Hello folks, Marco here. Today we're gonna take a look at the new Dallan FT24 roasted from Arley Benton. There is a lot to cover, so let's go quickly to the specs. This video was meant to be ready a long time ago, but I encountered few problems, more on that later. Let's begin by saying that if you watched the previous video I made about the first Dallan, there were few things I didn't like, such as the 22 frets, the neck profile, and of course bridge saddles. And it looks like Arlebenton actually listened to the feedback of the community, because now we have 24 frets, and a new clever way to avoid the bridge saddles from being too close to each other. So now there is no problem here where you turn the pegs for tuning. Basically there is a plate where each saddle sits perfectly straight and so problem solved. And I think it's very positive, you see a brand that listens and tries to please the customer. And let's not take this for granted, even though they didn't change the neck profile, which is still too chunky. This is not what a modern C feels like to me. Nope. The model I have here is the very new one with the roasted maple neck and fretboard. And man, would you look at that. This fretboard is insane. We're talking 499 for what I think is the cheapest and future spec headless guitar you can find on the market right now. But how is the quality? First of all, the instrument is very light, even more of what I expected. The finish is perfect. I can't see a single flaw on the gloss of the body or the satin finish on the neck. Also the neck joint, there is a slight bevel here, but I don't think it's enough. It's not as bad as a square fender one, but it could be better. The fret job for the price is crazy. 24 stainless steel frets, very nicely leveled. I don't have a single buzz on the entire fretboard, even though I lowered the action. And the fret ends, I think they are okay, considering the jumbo frets that, I mean, they are very large. Moving on, the pickups. The following clips, I try to achieve a more honest sound. Let me explain what I mean by that. As you heard in the intro, I think that with digital stuff, anyone can make it sound almost I say twice, almost like anything that he wants because he can shape the EQ, uh, add a ton of modulation, compressor. So why don't we try the old way, a real amp with little or nothing add to that.
you can hear strumming few open chords, these pickups have a very muffled and confused low end. When you play in the full unbucket positions, there is a low mid bump that is very unpleasant. And things get better in the split positions, but I think that the heavy lifting there is made by the natural compression that you get from the power amp section. I tried also the tone knob and it sounded okay. if not completely rolled off, otherwise the low end falls apart. Same with crunch sounds that sound a little bit better, in my opinion. Now is the moment of the truth. Before going on, I'd like to say that Arley Benton provided me with the guitar. They were very supportive, they are very kind people, but I'm here to give you a real and unbiased review. It all began when playing some wide bands, I started to have some tuning issues. So I checked the lockings at the top and found out that these screws were loose, so I tightened them and everything seemed fine, uh, no more tuning problems. Then I decided to lower the action to better fit my taste, my feel of the instrument and find out that also these little tiny screws were loose, but it was fine because these are the ones that allows the big screw that holds the string to go up and down, so you can change the action. I made my adjustments and then I tightened these little screws. Then I went back because I wanted to change a little bit more of the action and find out that they were all stuck, nothing moves. At this moment I went back and forth with Arley Benton, they were very supportive, they even sent me two new saddle bridges and of course they recommended me to not over tight these little screws. They are aware that they are fragile, they are so tiny, and so they told me to be careful. After installing the bridge saddles, of course I had also to change the strings, so I went on and uh, broke like four or five strings before finally I decided to check out the top screws. Two of them had a dent on the bottom, and of course this was causing the problem, so I had to file them. I went back and forth a few times because I was afraid of messing up again. Finally I got it right. So guys, owners of Dallands, beware, don't be like me. You must not tighten these little screws. You're not gaining anything in terms of tuning stability. If you care about the durability of the hardware, on this guitar you have to be gentle. Arley Benton already knows this kind of limitation and is working on it. In the meantime, I suggest you to be careful with the hardware you find here. After this little tragedy with the screws, I'll say that we're almost there. If Arley Benton finds a way to make a more efficient hardware, we're done. Don't get me wrong, the pickups are bad, but I think it's to be expected for its price range. I prefer to save a little bit of money on the guitar itself and choose myself the pickups because let's face it, that is a very subjective choice. So let's hope that the third time will be the one. That was all folks, I hope you enjoyed the review, I shall see you in the next one.